once in a while you hear or see a true story and you often think to yourself, there's no possible way that was real, right? No way that could have happened. And yet, every once in a while you have to remember, it did in this very messed up world of ours. One of those stories I am sure is going to be Woman of the Hour. Directed by Anna Kendrick in her directorial debut, the movie also stars her as a woman named Cheryl Bradshaw, who is an aspiring actress in LA. She's trying to make a name for herself, but it doesn't seem to be working out. Eventually, she gets called onto the dating show to participate, and this episode that aired in 1978 was a pretty interesting one because one of the bachelors happened to be a man named Rodney Alcala, played by Daniel Zavato in the movie, who had already killed, who happened to be a serial killer and had already killed multiple women at the time. And this was just broadcast on national television. He was right there, and despite the fact that some were suspicious of him, nothing was happening. And so you're essentially chronicling the events of that night and seeing the kind of things that Alcala was capable of. Now, if you know the true story of Alcala, you know that it didn't just stop at a few young women. But the movie is, while it is focusing on the fact that he is doing those crimes, it's also focused a lot on everybody who had met him and some of the interactions that they had with him and all the stuff that they were trying to tell people that something's wrong and nobody listening. Specifically when it came to the women who were coming forward with that information or their encounters. And it leads to a very terrifying movie because you're seeing a lot of this play out from the woman's perspective. In fact, in one of the cases, someone recognizes Alcala at the show and she is trying to tell people in the building, like, you've got to stop the tape this man has done something wrong because she witnessed something but nobody seems to be listening and the kind of danger and fear of just surviving as a woman when it comes to being in the world and just trying to get by your typical nine to five those specific tensions are also captured over here and it makes for a very unsettling experience, and I think Kendrick does an excellent job of directing it. This is a very intense movie, and as it progresses, and as the night continues on, and you start to learn more and more about Alcala through other flashes that you'll get of the things that he's done, it makes for horrifying viewing. And I think she did an excellent job of bringing all of that uneasiness to life, and the performances are equally great. She is great, of course, Anna Kendrick. I don't have to tell you that. She's a fantastic actress in everything that she does. But Daniel Zavato, who plays Alcala, is terrifying in this movie. He has these, you know, moments where he appears to be super, super charming and can say anything to impress a young woman and they will easily get impressed. In a lot of cases, he comes off as a photographer trying to take photographs of, you know, attractive people across the city. But then eventually, as they learn more about him and his demeanor starts to change, they start to get more fearful and then that's when he murders them. And how he manages to pull that off is extremely unsettling. Again, it just makes for a very scary experience to watch the movie. And a lot of that testament also goes to Ian McDonald's script, which is very tightly written and it showcases those events and everything that is going on in a very compelling way. This is a very, very well done movie. Also, very well shot for what it's worth. I will say that also too. It's also got a very intense score over it, which is extremely bone chilling. Really, chilling is the word when it comes to Woman of the Hour. It's hard to believe that a story like this actually happened, that this was really there. And yet, it was. That episode of the dating game was on TV. I mean, the, the way they've, they've captured that is pretty much how that went down. And even later, when Cheryl and Rodney meet up and they have this conversation going on over drinks, it seems like it's changing course as she's not necessarily giving him the answers that he wants. And there's this sense of rejection, maybe. And that's starting to terrify her. And it's executed excellently. I'm not going to give too much more away about it. There are other things going on in the movie, and I don't want to say more about that. There's also two great performances from Nicolette Robinson, who plays the audience member, the one who recognizes that something's wrong, and also Autumn Best, who plays the girl who's a runaway and she eventually meets with Alcala. And she is someone who ends up in his 
entire trap over here and i i love what they also did over here especially autumn best in a couple of scenes she's got a lot to do uh, at one point in the movie and she did a great job i would say the only thing is that at one point of time they hint at a little more of the story that doesn't really get conveyed there are some things that i would have liked especially with the perspectives that are offered that would have helped a few other details bring a little more, a little more impact to those details that would have brought maybe a little bit more impact to those details maybe you could have had a few more scenes like that but it's still a very tightly told movie and but it's still a very tightly done movie at the end of the day and it is one that i highly recommend checking out it's going to be on netflix next week it's also out in theaters i think right now in some places so if you have not seen it definitely go check it out i'm gonna give woman of the hour an 8.5 out of 10. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Look forward to more videos very, very soon. As always, if you like this, please do subscribe. And there's a lot coming, so stay tuned. There's going to be a bunch of videos dropping very, very soon. And I'll see you guys at the movies.